All right, first of all, thank you for the nice introduction. I cannot wait to meet myself, so that's great. Um, <laughs> and um, it's always a pleasure um, to, to meet some friend from Colombia. I remember uh, Christine when I was a fellow in 2007 and 8, and she was a PA, so she also kept me in order uh, back in the day. <laughs> Um, and it's great to see so many faces from Colombia and, and, and CRF. And you know you succeed in life when you get a job offer from either St. Francis and Morristown. Uh, so I'm, I'm very pleased to, uh, to be without you, uh, with you here today. So um, here's my disclosure. So um, today we're going to talk about a little bit the future and what we are building as the future. Um, uh, we had great presentation about where we, we've been with Tavern. Now we're going to see where we can go and if we should go there. And, First, we're going to start about uh, talking about the guideline, where we are. And when we look at the recent guideline, we see that there's all the indication for AVR as a whole, like TAVR or SAVR. And what we have is we have five class one indication for, for severe AS, which means class one, we should do it. There's a great trial and a great study that recommending this. There's a, no doubt we should do this. So five class one indication for uh, severe AS. Uh, so either CVRS with symptoms, CVRS with low ejection fraction, etc. Then we have four class 2A uh, indication when you have a patient with CVRS with no symptom, for example, with increased BNP, when you have a uh, stress test positive, etc. But they all, they all touch CVRS patient. And then we have two little uh, class 2B indication. The first one for CVRS when your EF drops slowly below 60%. And the second one, the only one on moderate AS, is when you have moderate AS and you need uh, open heart surgery. So if you have moderate AS and you need something else like a cabbage or something, another valve, you can change the valve. So this is where we used to grade and how we grade still AS in general. We focus on the valve. Um, and when the peak velocity is more than four or the mean grade is more than 40 and, and the AVA less than one, we know you need surgery or you need TAVR. So that's, that's what we learn in medicine. Uh, and that's what we uh, carry on for the last uh, 50 years. Uh, one other problem is it could be very, very challenging to determine the severity of AS. Uh, it's not all cookie cutter. Uh, and what we learn in medicine is if you have an AVA less than one, you need surgery. And this is kind of the dogma of what we, we, we carry our, uh, along. But when you see a lot of patients, start to see that nobody, not everyone fell into category of less than one and mean greater than more than 40. And what we started to do now is focus more on the cardiac consequences. So you can have moderate AS, but now you, and you start to see patients are short of breath and the muscle is very thick and there's severe diastolic dysfunction. They don't meet the dogma of less than one, but they're, you, you know, you feel that they need help. So this is what I, I call a, uh, I did this graph like five years ago when I was, we were designing progress trial, but at what severity of AS a patient will have adverse cardiac event? And we talk about mortality, valve-related symptoms, and cardiac damage. And there's really what I call the patient variability to AS load tolerability and, and adverse event expression. So patient can have 1.1 and 35 mean gradient, and this patient will not do well. Uh, you can have a patient with 0.6 valve area and 60 peak mean gradient, and the patient is doing great. So there's a variability in patient, and there's also a variability in cardiac damage buildup. And this is what we're missing with the dogma of uh, 1 and 40 mean gradient. Um, so that's why we focus so much on moderate AS these days. And, and when we look at the AVR indication for moderate AS, you see that it's only this one. If you need open heart surgery, you can change the valve. So there's nothing else in the guideline about moderate AS, which, which really is, 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 is an issue uh, for many patients. And the follow-up, what the guideline recommends, if you have moderate AS, well, you can follow the patient every one or two years. And that's, for me, a little bit of a problem because if you have a patient uh, that you follow every two years, you may miss the boat because patient may evolve differently. Um, so why are we talking about moderate AS right now? Is it because we have nothing else to do after the three TAVR trial, partner one, two, three, and then so let's go to moderate? Well, um, we're not uh, crazy. There's data to support that. We may be crazy and right at the same time, but um, I think there's data suggesting that moderate AS is as bad as severe AS. And this is where it starts by a paper from Strange and colleague. Uh, from an Australia database. So they review more than um, 240,000 patients. This is a registry, it's not a study, a randomized study. Um, and what you see um, in, in black, with the patient with severe AS over time, has very similar pronostic than the line in purple, which is moderate AS patient. 
So this start, this, this full thing about, oh, maybe we, we're, we should intervene in moderate AS because we see that there's a gradient in mortality into mild, moderate, and severe. And moderate, severe looks the same. So when I read this paper, I'm like, okay, I'm a little bit skeptical by nature. I say, okay, is this just because the patient were misclassified? We just, we do an echo in 10 minutes and we miss the jet and we, we misclassify patient. Um, is because we have a challenge to do the right diagnosis. Is this because the patient evolved, there's a subset of moderate AS that evolved quickly from moderate to severe and we miss the boat because we followed them in two years. Is there already too much cardiac damage with moderate AS and we focus on the valve and wait for the one, you know, the cutoff of one and we miss the boat? Uh, and are we doing too late intervention? So it's very difficult. So um, I remember a, a summer, maybe two, three years ago, we were designing progress and Dave, uh, you were a part of those call and we reviewed the, liter the literature, more than 450 study and, um, and, and we review more than 246,000 patients. And when we look patient with moderate AS, they don't do well. When you look at two years and a half of follow-up, so we're trying to see what is the mortality rate. We see that those patients have all cause death of mortality of 30%. Uh, at two years and a half. So not benign, 30% mortality. There's a lot of action in moderate AS patient. And when we saw also is 30%, a third of them need AVR within two years and a half. So there's a lot of progression to severe. So um, to quantify moderate as a benign entity is maybe not appropriate. This is another meta-analysis that got published in Jack Intervention that showed that moderate AS by itself is also not benign. And, and you know, there's nine, nine deaths for every 100 person uh, in this uh, analysis so and you can see more cardiac death heart failure uh, and there's a gradient of mortality to severe and moderate so moderate AS seems not to be a good thing so now the question is is all moderate AS equal you have moderate AS and you have moderate AS so could we identify a patient subset within the moderate AS 1 to 1.5 um, that may benefit actually uh, from an intervention or that we call it at high risk of cardiac event well, we also review all the literature and, and this is what we find. Patient with moderate AS and AFib, they don't do well. They have low stroke volume index. Patient with a moderate AS and EF, less than 60%, they don't do, that, don't, they don't do well. Severe diastolic dysfunction is already maybe too late. Patient that progress fast to one year, more than 0.3 peak velocity. People with low stroke volume index, sometimes there's two tick, they have small ventricle, they cannot generate enough flow. People with elevated BNP or elevated calcium score more than 2,000 for men and 1,200 for women. So those patients that, that smell like severe but look moderate, I think I believe those ones may, may be the one that we should be more aggressive. There's, there's probably a subgroup of moderate AS that are bad. And, and for the last, I would say, seven years, I've been pushing this concept with uh, other colleagues such as David and Philippe Pibarro about not only looking at the valve, the grading of AS, but what we call the staging, like cancer, to see the cardiac consequences or the metastasis of, of AS. So what we did, we divide all the patient from partner trial is five stages, similar to cancer. The stage zero is when you only have aortic stenosis. The LV is good, the RV is good, everything is good. Stage one is when the LV starts to get bad. So either tick, uh, diastolic dysfunction, hypertrophic, or down 50% or less. Stage two is when the pressure goes to the LA and you have a large LA, MR, or AFib. Stage three is when you wait so long, it's like the PA pressure is high and the tricuspid is leaking. And stage four is when your RV is down. So there's four stages. And what we, we look at, look at all the patients in the partner trial um, after successful surgical AVR or TAVR, and this is what we see in mortality at one year, is nicely separated. So, and I don't know which one you want to be on. And when you, have, you need a TAVR or AVR, do you want to be on the blue line or on the red curve? So I, I like the blue. So uh, you see that the mortality at one year, 4% if you're in stage zero, and 25% if you're in stage four. So it's the same mortality as stage four cancer. So I think the analogy with AAS and cancer is real. And you see this nice stratification uh, of patient after successful AVR. So maybe we wait too long. There's too much damage. And this is another paper that we did. We, we look actually at the evolution. Once you get your surgery or your TAVR and you have stage two or stage three cardiac damage, what is your chance to improve at one year? Well, only 16% improve their cardiac damage at one year. 60% stay the same, and 26% worsen. So the, con the concept of should we wait uh, to achieve this elusive goal of less than one in 40, um, while there's silent damage building up, I think could be challenged. Because once you change the valve, the damage don't disappear. So we see, it seems that we're waiting for a second or third disease before putting the trigger, and symptom is maybe not a good marker for that. 
So I think this is call of, for an action plan to maybe detect and treat AS earlier, but mo also maybe follow those patients differently, not only be in fact rate by the valve area in the gradient, but look at the big picture. And um, at TCT, and thanks to um, Susan Arnold and Dave Cohen that teach me about quality of life, uh, we also look at the relationship between the extent of cardiac damage at baseline and the quality of life uh, at one year. So you can see here, the more damage you have, the less likely you, you will be to have a, a great quality of life or be alive. So the key here is, yes, cardiac damage is associated with mortality, reaspiration, but also the likelihood to have a less um, um, a good quality of life. So, um, and then what we did is we also model what is the relationship between change of cardiac damage and change in key CCQ score. And when you see, when you improve your cardiac damage after TAVR or AVR, you have more chance to improve your quality of life. On the opposite, if you deteriorate your, your cardiac damage or you worsen your, your function, you, you have less chance to benefit from the AVR or the TAVR. So obviously no surprise here, the, the worse you are cardiac damage wise, the less chance to be happy in your life. So that's the big message. So we look actually also in moderate AS, and this is Jerome Bax and his group who said, we took all the moderate AS patients in his database, 1,200 patients, uh, and you see the same stage of cardiac damage have the same impact as severe. So you see there's also the same relationship with patient in, in, in moderate AS than in severe. And we just published at ACC this, uh, this, this abstract where we uh, were lucky to present at ACC on 1.6 million echo from 25 center, 1, 000, 1 million patient. And what do we see? What is the two years mortality across the spectrum of AS? And what you see in the bottom, it's no, no AS. You see in blue, it's mild. And then mild to moderate, and then moderate, and then moderate to severe, and then severe. And you can see the moderate to severe and the severe has the same mortality, which called it sometimes it's hard to qualify, quantify the AS. But when, when, when you don't know if it's moderate to severe, maybe you should say it's severe because they have the same mortality. And the moderate is also at the top of the line. So all those data point toward that moderate is not benign, uh, and maybe we should pull the trigger uh, quicker for the AVR. So I'm going to show you a patient, and I'm sure you all see frequently, um, this 82 years old female come with hypertension, AFib, and she's in class three heart failure with a recent admission with BNP at 5,000. This is her EKG, she's, she's in AFib, and this is the echo, and you can see here, she has a very thick ventricle, uh, but normal function. The peak velocity is 3.6 and mean gram 29, and we try to stretch this jet and try to make it severe, and we can't. AVA is 1.1. Uh, mean grain is 29, um, EF is 65%, she has severe diastolic dysfunction, and her stroke volume index is normal. So this patient is very frequent, and we try to make it severe, but if you apply the guideline and you're going to be audited, then you, you, you're going to be qualified qualify as a wrongdoing. You do tavern on patient with moderate, what are you doing? But those patients need help, they came with heart failure. So this is, this is the type of patient, there is no clear indication for those. Um, so this is why we decided to, to do the PROGRESS trial, and there's other that, that, that follow us, but this patient with moderate AS, heart failure symptoms, severe dyslexic dysfunction, AFib, um, there's no place for the guidelines, so we, sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't, um, but that's, that's the question. So this is where we, we designed the, the PROGRESS trial, again with people in the room, um, and Dave Cohen was instrumental for that too. So what is the PROGRESS trials? Well, this is um, a multi-center randomized trial that will take moderate, moderate patient with AVA 1 to 1.5 and mean gradient between 20 and 40. Um, and that's going to have at least, those patients need to have at least one adverse feature that I mentioned at risk, either low EF, heart failure, increased in, in tpo BNP. So we don't take all moderate AS. We take the one that with high risk feature and we randomize them to TAVR with S3 or uh, Ultra. Um, or to clinical surveillance. We apply the guideline every year follow-up. And we're going to follow those patients for 10 years with a dedicated database for blood, blood bank, blood biomarker, CT scan, echo, etc. So very exciting study. Um, we're going to learn a ton on, uh, on those patients. Independently, what is the, the result of this? I think we're going to learn a lot. Um, and um, this is the criteria. 65 years old and above, moderate AS as qualified as the, the guideline. And we need to have a peak velocity between three and four and a mean gradient between 20 and 40. And what we need, we need a patient that has symptom of heart failure or 
If the patient is asymptomatic, it could be included, but you need to have at least EF less than 60%, that severe diastolic dysfunction, moderate to severe diastolic dysfunction, a low stroke volume index, AFib, nt pro BNP three times the normal, or elevated calcium score that looked like severe. So at least one of those. So it's very easy. You look at moderate AS and you put those, those criteria. And if you have at least one of those, you could be included in the study. Um, and I'm very pleased to be part of a, a group of small people, uh, smart people, um, uh, not small, smart, I'm small, but it's okay. <laughs> so a group of smart people and a very collective effort and believe that's going to make a difference. And there's another study also uh, by uh, Medtronic called the XPEN2 trial, very similar. Uh, they take patients with moderate AS, but they need um, symptom of heart failure or low EF. They don't go into the detail of BNP and et cetera, et cetera. And they need to be for a month on the uh, optimal medical therapy. And then they randomize to core valve uh, versus clinical surveillance. This study is also ongoing. Um, and then there's also the TAVR on low trial, which actually is completed. This study was very different. This was really for patients with low EF, moderate AS with low EF, 20 to 50% EF. Very niche population, very hard to find because those patients, um, you know, they, they kind of live... Uh, with EF of 30%, and oh, by the way, they have moderate AS. So it's, it's, it's very hard to find those patients. So they, they stopped the enrollment at 200 patients. The study is completed. Um, I would say that the, the PROGRESS trial is way easier because right now we have, uh, I think, up to 300 patients enrolled and 95% um, have normal EF. So I think the big bucket of PROGRESS trial patients uh, are the one with normal EF. And Tavarian load is a really small uh, part of this, uh, but I think we're going to learn a lot of those patients, clearly sicker patients, the one with low EF, sometimes kidney dysfunction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I'm going to conclude by the way I see EAS uh, and maybe the way we should see AS uh, in the future. And I choose the color to mimic the guideline. I don't know if someone can talk to the guideline maker, but I think that's just, that makes sense. But I think we should see um, AS you know, as a grading system, like cancer, mild, moderate, severe, you look at the valve, you can easily assess what the tumor looks like. And then you talk about the stage. Are you in stage zero that you know, have no cardiac damage or are you in stage one where the LV start to be thick? Uh, or are you very advanced, you're in stage two, three or four where you, you have two or three disease already. And the good news is we have all those studies that will help us to def this, decide if this thing makes sense. And, you know, we have the PROGRESS trial, we have the EXPEND trial, we have the TAVR on log trial. We already do surgery or TAVR for patients that's severe with either symptom or cardiac damage. We already do this. But the question is for severe AS with no symptom, for example, the early TAVR, what are we going to do? For patients with moderate AS with cardiac damage and heart failure, what are we going to do? So my feeling is now we're building the evidence in the next five, ten years will be very exciting. And I think we will be able to, 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 to say if you were right or wrong. But definitely, I think we're going to see AS differently than AVA less than one and peak velocity more than four. And then we're going to start to do medical therapy trial when you're mild. And I think the concept is mild is not like no AS. Mild AS, you have the disease. You have bad gene. You're progressing. It's a systemic disease. We have to stop saying it's only mild. I see you in five years. This is an inflammatory disease probably or something else. But something is going on and there's wrong genetics. So we need to treat those patients with the disease. Um, so in conclusion, I think early detection of AS and potentially treatment is important. I, I think we should maybe start screening patients above 65 with an echo to see if they have mm -hmm. mild AS and, and treat them accordingly. Um, optimal timing of intervention, I think it's the key and we still don't know uh, if we should intervene beyond severe AS or before. Um, and there's a lot of study ongoing and progress is one of them in moderate AS to see if we should intervene earlier. Um, and I want to thank you for your attention. And actually, I'm very, very happy to see that uh, St. Francis is an, an, an up and running for mo the PROGRESS trial. Um, so uh, please contact uh, Kristen or George or um, anybody involved in, in, in the study. We really want to be part of this. And I think that's a, a lot of publication will come and the scientific input of this will be very, very large. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.